today I am inking this super cute mermaid and I'm going to be inking it with a brush. That's right, traditional inking. I'm going to do this in time lapse because I find that when I'm inking, talking affects my ability to pull a nice smooth line. And to be quite honest, I value inking this more than I value walking you guys through it. But I do have other inking tutorials here on this channel. I will link them in the card, so keep an eye out. And if you have specific questions, or if you'd like to see something sort of demonstrated in detail, feel free to let me know in the comments below. When I'm inking, I follow a certain order of operations. I ink the objects that are overlapping first, and then I ink the objects behind. So I work from uh, foreground to background, and that just helps me, I guess, with making sure my inks are connected. Now, the kind of inks I'm doing are what I think of as open inks. I plan on watercoloring this so I'm not filling in spot blacks. If I were doing this just for black and white, I would fill in the eyes, I'd fill in the mouth, I would have heavier shadows. I am trying to have bouncy, energetic line weights. Something else that I'm doing differently because this is for watercolor and not for reproduction is there are several things that if I were um, just doing this for black and white, I would use some white correctional fluid or some form of white correction. My preferred method right now is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, but white gouache also works really well. Copic Opaque White also works really well. And I would just kind of tighten some of these things up, clean them up. However, when you do that at the ink stage and then you watercolor over it, it forms a resist and it's noticeable where you made your corrections. Now you can use this to good effect, but I feel like just having random things kind of tightened up just wouldn't look right once I did the watercolor. So this is something that I frequently do when I'm inking. Um, I often will just have to let go of small mistakes. And I've found that not being able to correct my mistakes, having to live with them has made me a stronger inker, um, at least for what I'm trying to do and stronger than what I would have been otherwise. Um, it makes me more decisive with my inks. Now I am using a brush that's a little larger than I'm used to. So I am having some control issues and I'm also not actually inking 100% properly. I should be inking from my elbow down, but I have a very limited desk space. So a lot of my inking is coming from my elbow and even from my wrist. And you don't wanna ink from those two pivot points. The more you can use your whole arm, the better your curves are gonna look, the better your straight lines are gonna look. So I'm not entirely happy with how his hand was drawn. I actually think I want his thumb out. There, thought I was gonna have to erase, but no.
I finish sometimes when I'm inking traditionally, especially with a brush, I feel like I'm holding my breath the whole time. And it's because I stagger my breathing to kind of match as I pull the lines. Now there's some areas that, like I said, if I wasn't doing this to watercolor, if I was just doing this as a black and white piece, I would go back and fix that, those areas. I'd lighten up some of this on the tail. Um, I might clean up some of the lines on the scales, that sort of thing. But if I do that, it's not gonna look very nice when I watercolor it. And even an ink wash wouldn't look very good. So I just have to leave it as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let this dry for 24 hours. That's gonna let the ink cure. You don't have to let it dry for 24 hours. I recommend it as just my de facto. I do it when I ink things with a brush. I do it when I ink things with a brush pen. I do it when I ink things with a nib. I find 24 hours just seems to be a good all around time. And it also means I'm not pushing myself to constantly pump out piece after piece after piece after piece after piece, which is something I'm really guilty of doing. So I'm gonna let this dry for 24 hours and then I'm gonna use a very soft eraser, like a white stroke to erase the graphite. And uh, then when I finish my 15 little mermaids or mer people, mer kids, cause they're kind of non-gendered <laughs> mer children, um, I'm going to start watercoloring them and I hope you guys will join me for that as well. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, helping me ink this little mermaid. Hopefully this will inspire you to do some inking with a brush and hopefully you'll check out some of my other tutorials, other videos on how to do just that because I promise you it is a, it is a little scary, but it's something that you get better as you practice. And I know that as I complete my other mermaids, I'm gonna get better and better um, because this is a skill and like any skill, if you don't use it, you lose it. So um, there's always a bit of a learning curve, but I'm happy with how this little one turned out. Very cute. It is a goldfish. Um, so when I was designing it, I definitely kept that in mind. I heavily referenced goldfish when I was drawing this character. So, um, I think it's really cute and I can't wait to see it in color. I can just see it in queen gold. So I hope you guys have a great day. I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Bye guys.